Good evening and welcome to the Job Search Solution, the radio program where we talk about looking for a job, changing jobs, changing careers, hiring. And as always, we begin with a prayer. Dear God, grant us thy peace and thy mercy. Thy will be done. Rich Levinsky is going to be with us here in just a few minutes, talking about consultants in the workplace. Also, you can email me at Tony at Babich.com. That's T-O-N-Y at B-A-B-I-C-H.com. Any questions you might have about looking for a job or hiring, uh, we go over those about once a week on this radio program, so don't hesitate to do that. Criticisms are welcome. Um, we are used to getting those in the recruiting business with no problem at all, and we learn to deal with those, especially after, um, what, 46 years, 49 years. It'll be 50 years in May um, I'm doing this. I wanted to discuss something that's real sensitive to most all candidates, job candidates, as well as hiring authorities. And it has to do with staying in touch and communicating with candidates and employers in when going through the interviewing process. This is probably one of the largest causes of frustration on the part of candidates uh, and a minor frustration on the part of hiring authorities. And it has to do with communicating with candidates exactly what's going on in the interviewing process. What brought this to mind was last Friday, I had a candidate that the employer told him, look, um, we're gonna have these final interviews on Friday. Uh, you're gonna interview with two of my higher ups and I'm gonna get information from them right after that. And I'll plan on trying to hire you then because I like you and I think you would be really good for the job. And these guys are just um, incidental uh, tire kickers. They're, they're part of the process. Well, the interviews went on and the candidate didn't hear from the employer. He waited and waited and he waited and he has a couple of other things that are going on and he waited and the employer didn't call him. So about six o'clock came along on Friday and I called the employer. I fortunately got him. He says, well, I wasn't able to get a hold of one of the guys that did the interviewing and I can't do that. Our process is I have to get a, an okay from them and uh, from all of them. And so I, I can't give him a call. I said, well, can you at least give the candidate a call and tell him the situation? Well, yeah, I guess I can. Yeah. And so he embarrassingly and uh, called the candidate and said, look, I'm not going to be able to get an answer for you until maybe Monday because I can't get a hold of this hiring authority or this interviewing authority. Well, it's Wednesday now, and um, we still haven't heard from the hiring authority. And the candidate, of course, is extremely frustrated, and uh, his hopes are riding on this thing. It's been dragging on for almost two months, and he was pretty much assured by the hiring authority that the hiring authority wanted to hire the guy and really likes him, but still no answer. So it's very frustrating. And it's, you could say, not fair, but not life isn't fair. But it really is uh, looking for a job and getting a job is the highest priority that a, a, a candidate has. To a hiring authority, it's just one of the many things that they're dealing with. For goodness sakes, it's just courteous to give people a call and tell them where they stand, even if the answer is no. Now, on the part of the candidate, you've got to realize that there are a lot of things going on in the hiring authorities world. Hiring is just one of them. Most hiring authorities really don't like hiring. They do it, but rarely, and I say this often, but rarely is one of the um, uh, reasons that a 
and in, that an individual gets hired is their ability to hire well. You don't see that on job descriptions. You should. If it's a management job, one of the first points of the job description should be knows how to hire and manage people well and can prove it. But you hear things like, or you read things like good written and verbal communication skills. I mean, come on. So the lesson is, if you're a hiring authority, be courteous to the people that you are interviewing. If you're not going to be able to keep the schedule that you told them you were going to keep, call them and tell them. It's terribly frustrating. I've had candidates not go to work for employers over the years because they were so rude in the interviewing process. They would tell them, well, we'll get a hold of you on Monday or Tuesday or wherever, and then they never do. It's just not right. It's just not nice. And if we can't go through this world, especially in business, being nice, then, I mean, what good is it? If you're a candidate, please be understanding. The intentions are good on the part of the hiring authorities. They're always good on the intentions. They mean to do well, but things sometimes just don't work out. And be that understanding of that. And I realize that getting a job is your highest priority. If you have enough opportunities going on, you don't have to worry about any particular one. Of course, that's real easy to say, but not necessarily real easy to do. So please, be courteous, be kind, put yourself in the shoes of the other guy on both sides of the desk. All right, we're going to take a short break. Stay tuned. This is Tony Bashiro with the Job Search Solution. <laughs> 